Welcome to the channel where all you gotta do is repower this skid steer. So, pop the motor back out of there after seeing what didn't fit. Um, it's kind of hard to video in here, so I kind of moved all the shit out of the way. Um, so I took the pump housing off. That's that disgusting right there. This is an interesting. Pretty sure that's not supposed to be there. We'll make believe we uh, didn't find that there. And this thing was never bolted down either. This whole plate was just flopping around, held by the hoses. So we're gonna get this in the solvent tank cleaned up, along with this housing. Got a new filter here. I ordered one of these like, I don't know, six months ago. Can't find it, so I ordered a new one. I'll find it now. So we'll get that filter popped out of there, clean that housing up. And then I got new hoses for this guy here and all the other giblets. So uh, there's a hose that goes on there. It goes into the pipe. It comes off the housing and goes to the inlet of the pump. And then there's another. That hose right there is the one I popped off. So I think I'm going to... Yeah, pop new hoses on here, give this thing another pressure washy bath, it's still kind of grungy in here. Okay, sun's in a different part of the sky now, somewhere up there. Anyway, so I got all those parts cleaned up. This little filter housing and that hose, and then this big mount thingy. This thing, uh, this plate here was in with zero bolts, so I cleaned it up, remedied that, gave it a little pressure wash jobber here. So I need to hook up the pressure line thingy that goes to the filter plugged up gauge thing. And then, uh, yeah, I'll put the filter on and I got that hose on there. Got a couple more, but. And then I also tap that deeper. See how that sunk in there? And then I'm gonna take a grinder, flap disc, and make that flush, and make that flush, and... Anyway, it's really hard to film this because I'm kind of in a cavity, but I'll, uh, I'll work for a little bit and then show you what I did. Keep doing that. Okay, so I got this other hose on here. This one's kind of in a shitty spot, I guess, but... And then I ground all these. Welded on bolts, and then there's the plug. And I made flush. So yeah, I'm just gonna give this thing another quick washing, and then... We'll start throwing the motor in for, like, wheelies. Can't believe it. Let's get a close up of what we got going on here. So I pre cut this hose, clamped it on that end. It's going to need to slide a little bit on this end for the adjustment, but it should be fine. I can loosen that up. I think I can still get to it easily enough. And then I got this guy. This is one of the original pipes. And then I got an adapter to another adapter. That's the way it works. Hardware store nightmares everywhere. And then I, I zip tied this B belt. I'm not using that anymore, but if somebody wants to put the old engine back in, they won't have to take this contraption apart, which isn't that fun. I guess with the motor out, it'd be pretty easy, but I did it when I put a new belt on, and it's, uh, it's not that fun. Not 
box lines up beautifully. Thanks, previous owner. Okay, so this is the first time I put this thing in for realsies, and I put all the bolts in first, and then second I took them all out, because this thing here, um, if the motor is bolted in its final resting position, you, could, you can't get this on. So I just had a, I left the front right bolt on, because that's the hardest one to access, and then if you just rotate this back a few degrees, then you can get this on, and then slide it back to where it goes. Put the rest of the bolts back in. It misses by a uh, quarter of an inch or something like that. Not much. So, um, so yeah, this uh, this isn't too bad, honestly. Okay. So, the next process here is to get this belt on, which is, uh, it's not that fun, but it's doable. So, typically when you put a new belt on it, um, the belt is all the way, the front belt, and that shiv is all the way at the top. So, the way you have to do this, or the best way I found to do it, is, uh, you, you just jump inside and put your foot right there and kind of put your weight on it. And what that does is it pushes this belt down into the groove um, and that spreads it apart and then so the bottom you can pull on it and um, get that into a smaller diameter of pulley. And then put some clamps of some sort to hold this shiv um, as narrow as possible and once you step on it and make that shiv wider then you can jiggle this around here and the springiness of the clamp will allow it to go in a little bit and then you tighten the clamp up and you keep doing that keep doing that over and over again until this circlip groove is out far enough so you can put the little cover on there so it looks like we're about there right now because there's a little there's a little metal cover that goes on here, and then a little clip. So, and before I did the, I don't know, three or four iterations of clamp, jump, clamp, jump, clamp, jump, um, this thing was inside, I don't know, half an inch or three quarters of an inch or something. There's no way you're gonna get it together. So, um, and this is as far as this comes out, right? This comes and stops. So, anyway, I think I'm far enough out so I can get that little cover and the clip and then once that's done, I can put this fitting on and then hook the hydraulic line to it. So, anyway, this is, uh, I see most people that do uh, engine swaps on these things just throw that thing away, but it's nice to have variable speed. Like, you pick up a load of dirt and if you're in low speed, you're just like putting along two miles an hour. But if you hit that high speed thing, she bucks. So, um... And then you need the torque to, when you get to where you're going and need to scoop some dirt up and you just go back to low speed, it's fine. So anyway, a nice feature. Most people, most people uh, delete it because I'm not sure why, but the other nice feature of putting it on this way is you can get the belts lined up. Like if you get it all the way to the um, center of the shim, that belt should be going straight, which you can see it's going a little bit crooked right now. So I will adjust that and tighten up the set screws. Which is fun as well because the set screws are under this. So you have to you have to tighten up the set screw in there and then rotate it and keep doing that. Anyway, it's not impossible but okay so I got the belt on. I got the little cover. There's a little circlip in there. I don't know if you can see it. Make sure that's in all the way and then I got this fitting on. And then this fitting for the hydraulic. So, 
And it looks to me those are kind of in the center of travel, so I think I need to move that pulley over. I don't know. Quarter of an inch or something. Okay, so I got all the set screws holding that on. You can see where it is from the original. That red mark was the original place I wanted it to be, but I need more clearance in here, so. Um, and that's the routing for the butcher line. Everything's looking fairly tidy. I'm going to have to make a little bit of a bracket to hold this in position. I think this is as far as this goes over, so that's not going to hit. And maybe have to have, this is really close here. I might have to have a some kind of a strain pull it against this or something, make a little bracket to hold it out of the way. So when I go into low gear, wait, nope, high gear, doesn't rub a hole in that. Anyway, there it is. All its glory. Still got to lengthen those wires. Got the fuel tank, clacker pump, blah de blah de blah. Tired of hearing about that clacker pump thing, aren't you? But anyway, this is where we are. This is what it looks like. Hopefully the muffler fits on. Hopefully is an uh, engineer, engineering term. I should probably try that. It's going to be painful if it doesn't. I really don't want to run this hose through there. But we'll come up with something that works. Welcome back. So, I've done a little bit of uh, work since last. Didn't film it because it's kind of boring. But anyway, I added a new fitting up here for the return line. So that'll just go shoop back into there. And again, this is the inlet from the clacker pump. This is the outlet going to the motor. Nothing's changed there. And then I added this vent tube. So, and then this is an overflow in case. Yeah. So if this thing, when this thing fills up, at this level, it'll start draining out. And then, yeah. That will, that's higher. So unless we're on a really steep angle, that's gonna be higher. So it shouldn't be a problem. Um, so the next thing I need to do, um, since all this stuff's hooked up now, is I have to drill these two holes here for the fittings. One to suck it out, one to return it back from restated return. So what I'm gonna do here is I made this spoon out of a piece of welding wire and some tin foil. And I'm just going to jam this in here, kind of like that. Yep. Trying to do it with one hand is maybe not clever. There we go. So now that thing should catch all the debris from drilling the holes in there. And when it doesn't catch, I use this magnet to uh, go in there and get the rest of it. And if, if I do drop some in the tank, it's completely empty now. If I do drop some in the tank, it's not a big deal. I'll just take the magnet and um, go to the bottom and get what's left over. But this should catch the most of it. So um, there will be a filter in the system, like a, like a spin-on oil filter looking thing. So it shouldn't really be an issue, but uh, an ounce of prevention, something, something. So, um, so I got these brackets made and mounted so this thing's nice and secure. Alright, since my magnet on stick isn't quite long enough to get on the bottom, I taped it to a screwdriver what you gotta do when you don't have the right tools for the job. Not right there so I can see. 
this is a little bit more challenging because Big chip and three little chips. Seems to be oh, no, there's another one in the corner there. We'll get that one too. It would have probably been better if I would have put more duct tape on this. more tiny little pieces. Anyway, I think that's good. I'm going to call it good. So there's going to be a filter on this anyway, but... Okay. So here's my plan for the fuel pickup. This is just 5 sixteenths brake line. I'm gonna cut the end off at one end, get those fittings divorced from the situation. Alright, so that's cut off. I can slide these guys out of here. I need those for this project. And then this is going to slide through this little fitting here that has a ferrule in it. But before I do that, I'm going to have to modify this because this isn't big enough for, for this uh, 5 16 to go all the way through. So I'm just going to throw this on the lathe, open that up. Okay, so I uh, science out where I'm going to put this guy. This is the fuel filter that was on it, and it was mounted like right in here, but a little too close to the exhaust for my liking. So I was thinking about putting it in here, still a little too close to the exhaust. So what I came up with is there's actually a a cavity that goes all the way through here. So I made this little bracket, this little aluminum guy here. I 16 threads, hold this to this, and then a big long bolt. Shoots in from this side, and then this thing gets bolted on like right there. And then, super easy to change, the feed is going to go from right here to right here, and then the outlet I can make it wherever I want, but I think I'm going to make it here and then zip back around and this clacker pump will be on this little plate right here and then from there we'll go to the thingy. So, kind of got this sciced out now. I just need to do a little bit of trimming on this and uh, make a washer for this end of the bolt because it's not, it's not really a round hole in here, it's just like a cavity in where this thing bolts on. So. Need to make a little, and then uh, yeah, that should be that should be super tidy right there. So there it is. I just put a piece of eighth inch plate there, drilled a hole through it, semi in the middle, and there you have it. It's a 
lovely new morning and toasty warm ish. So I did a little bit more uh, hosing last night. I got all the hoses hooked up except for I gotta mount that pump still. So I haven't put those hoses on, but I got a fuel inlet line and I gotta do a little bit of tidying, tying things up with zip ties and stuff. And then, yeah, the plan for today is put some fuel in it. Um, the oil that, when I put the drain pan out of it and took the filter off and stuff, it, it lost a, like a quart and a half of oil, so I filtered that through some filters and I'm going to throw that back in. It's just chain lubrication kind of oil, so it's not perfection. Um, and then I got to lengthen all these wires to go to the dash panel. I guess I could start it up without that, but um, and I got to put a battery in it and hook all the hoses, electrical hoses that is, and throw the seat back in. And then when that's all done, oh, I got to remove all this garbage too. This is like the old mechanical throttle and the tag and this thingy and yeah there's a bunch of wires that went to the distributor I don't need any of that junk anymore so I'll remove all that and then I gotta put the pedals back on because it's really hard to operate without pedals and then the floorboards gotta go back in and the seat so yeah after that's all done, I'm going to fire it up and move that pile of dirt. So some dumbass, not sure who it was, most certainly a dumbass though, ordered the wrong size clamps. So, in order to make it work anyway, because when you tighten them down, they kind of get not round. So what I do, because I never have the right size clamp, is I just find something round that's nice and sturdy, tighten it up against that. It helps if it's kind of the same size as what you're clamping on. In this case, that one isn't quite small enough, so I just happen to have this tap out here. So you can see it's kind of, when you tighten it down, it's kind of not round. But, since everything is a spring, and yieldable spring, you just tighten that down good and tight, around something round. You can also snip this off with a pair of tin snips, which I usually do. Let's see, now that's kind of round. The smartest way to do it is to order the right size hose clamps, but you know. Don't worry about the spittle on there. I gotta leave my DNA somewhere. Make sure you torque these to the appropriate. Okay, so sun's in a different part of the sky, of course. But I've got a few things done. That little pump's mounted. Hose connected. Electrical hose is not. Put the muffler back on. Seems easy enough. Oh, I greased up all the giblets except for this one up here is kind of fucked up, so I'm gonna have to replace that. Zerk fitting, and then I put all this floor junk back in, the choke cable. I'll probably grind this guy off. This used to hold the throttle, which I don't need anymore. Um, this is all that old wiring, ignition key and stuff, but I have no instructions for that. Uh, and if I want to put the Hobbs meter, what wire I hook it to, yada yada yada. So that's all ready to go. I just need to hook that positive wire to the battery. Preferably the positive side. Yep. 
Um, so, oh, and I dumped the, dumped a little bit more hydraulic fluid in it. Not a big deal, I made a giant mess. Got every tool in the shop out here. Um, I forget what was on my list of things to do, but um, I think I'm at the point where I put the, uh, I lengthen all the wires and put the dash panel in and then rig up a switch for that clock pump and dump some fuel in it. So I guess that's my next endeavor is uh, lengthening I don't know, nine wires, I think. Okay, so we're in the home stretch. I made a list of all the wires I need. And I have a limited supply of said wires. So like purple I don't have, but I'll just take a red marker and a blue marker and make this purple. And it seems like whoever designed this wiring harness really likes yellow because Seems like half the wires are yellow, or at least yellow with some stripe. So I'm going to start with this guy here. It has three wires on it. It's got a yellow, a yellow with a green stripe, and a blue. So, these ones for later. I tangled them up on purpose just to make it like normal around here. Okay, so there's a yellow. blue and another yellow and we'll get a green marker and put a stripe on it and that'll be good enough for the girls I don't dance with green marker Tell me that doesn't look like a yellow wire with a green stripe. Perfection! We'll be doing the same. I think uh, I have a selection of many different color markers. Fourth tries a charm. There should be one more. Alright. So now that we got our bundle of wires. Oops. The green stripe didn't make it all the way to this end. Okay, I know how to fix that. Okay, so now we're gonna chop this thing in half and weld it back together. Which 
is always a bit scary. Yep, I broke it. Okay, luckily everything is nicely labeled. Otherwise, yellow, 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 green stripe, yada, yada, yada. So. So these papers are kind of nice when you have a scenario where you can't really pull on the wire because you can you can fit it into like little places kind of and you don't have to have a, a good grip on the wire because it pulls it itself right it crimps it in between a couple of little dies and then pulls it itself so You don't need to have a reaction to the wherever this thing is moored to. It's a little bit less reliable than some strippers where you can grab a hold of it, but when you don't have a room to grab a hold of it, these are these are the go-to. Not as reliable as the original ones, though. Maybe if I bought a set that didn't have orange handle, which means it's from Harbor Freight, in case you're wondering what I'm alluding to. All right, so I'm going to start with this blue one. The way I like to do this is you can see that just make them cross and then twist them so it kind of stays together on its own and then you solder it and try not to put a bunch of tension on it so it falls back apart you do this tidy enough it also makes the shrink wrap sit nice and neat because there's no blobs on the, the wire so if you guys never soldered before the way you have to do it you don't have to you just do it the slow way but if you put a little bit of solder on the soldering iron that's already hot so that'll make like a big blob and then touch that blob to the copper and then that transfers the heat better because it has a lot of surface area because it's a blob of molten tin, tin lead combination, depending on what kind of solder you're using. And so that makes it heat up really fast. Now you can just hold the soldering iron and eventually the copper will get hot, but uh, you only get so many trips around the sun, so. As well speed things up if you can. Uh, huh. What have I done to myself here? Now what you definitely don't want to do is put some solder on the tip and then just drip it on there and think you're done. That's called cold soldering and that doesn't work. That will, that will break. So, got it. You got to wait till it flows into all the little nooks and crannies between the two wires and then Hold it still for a couple seconds till it kind of solidifies and then you're good to go. I don't know where you're going, but you're good to go there. And 
once the solder gets hot enough to wick into the joints from the heat transfer change for making a blob on there, then you can feed the solder right into the into the wires. So as you can see, that didn't take very long. Those three wires are soldered together. And I got I indeed got the green stripe one matched with the green stripe one. So now I'm just gonna put some heat shrink tube on it and heat shrink those guys together there. I don't know if you're familiar with heat shrink tube, but it looks like this. You just slide it over. It's kind of like electrical tape, but a zillion times better. So when you're doing the first side, it's not too big of a deal. But the second side, you have to put the heat shrink on, you know, prior to soldering. Otherwise, you can't get it on there anymore because you got a connector on each end. It's kind of like putting putting flare tubes on. Yeah, you kind of got to do it before you flare it. Okay, so I guess about an hour has elapsed, and I got all these connectors connectorized up so now I'm gonna install it into the dash panel doodad and then uh, yeah we'll be doing some starting stuff this is the for wire striping whatever color you need it works better on yellow and white than it does on you know dark colors. Obviously. All right, so this thing's all together. Well, I gotta lengthen these wires to figure out where they go for the field gauge, but I'm not gonna worry about that right now. There's a whole bunch of other electrical stuff. I have to put some lights on it and yada yada yada. But for now, engine should start, engine should change speed, I should have oil pressure monitor, blah blah blah. I won't have that working yet, but we should be able to zip it around, so. Okay, so I dumped 12 gallons in there in the normal hole. Copper pump's clacking. It was clacking really loud, but not so much anymore. You can hear it. You can hear it going into here. Yeah, it's about a half inch deep in there. It's only been going a minute, so I'll be okay. Okay, so it's got fuel in it, and I'm about to hook up the battery, and see what happens. Hopefully nothing exciting will happen, other than it's starting. Okay, so, Tuesday this week, um, I got this thing all buttoned up, and I hooked the battery up, and I pushed the start button, and it went click. And that was it. So I called up Duromax, and uh, within two minutes, somebody was on the phone. It's pretty awesome. Um, we went through a couple of little diagnosing things, like uh, I jumped the starter directly, does it crank over? Yes, it does. Um, so the starter wasn't bad. And then when I pushed the start button, the uh, the start button surround turns red and the button turns red so that's like a fault so it automatically shuts down so they diagnosed not sure if it's correct or not i'm about to find out that it was the electronic control unit was bad no idea why 
So they sent me a new one. Um, they informed me on Wednesday morning that they were going to ship it out, and it's Friday now. Uh, I don't know, new niche. Um, and I have it. So you're kind of expecting it yesterday because it came from Southern California, and I'm in Northern California. So, but anyway, I'm going to plug this guy in now and see if we can make some smoke. So, good luck. See that? A lot of shadow, but I just replaced this guy right here. These are the layers that I lengthened for the go into the control panel. So let's hook up that battery. And push the go button. Thing. Thanks for watching. If you like this content and want more, subscribe, like, and share.